I set out to build a better belt grinder with a huge motor, variable speed, adjustability, instant belt changes, robust tracking, the ability to run horizontally, modular design, and do all of it in a portable package. Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're building a high powered, variable speed, two by 48 inch belt grinder using these parts laid out here on the table. Everything will be built off of this two horsepower, three phase motor and this variable frequency drive that allows me to run it off single phase. This is a cheap VFD and I may upgrade this in the future. I've designed the whole mechanism here in Onshape. This is a web-based CAD software that I've used for years. They have a free version you can just log in and you're up and modeling without having to download anything. So I really like it for that. To have these parts made, I just need one-to-one -one scale drawings that I'll export out of the software and then log into my laser cutting service, which is Send, Cut, Send, and add them to the cart. Here I can select my material and everything is gonna be made out of mild steel that's a quarter inch thick for this build. Now, not only can you have things laser cut, you can also have hole operations. Here, uh, we'll be adding some tapping to the holes because we need threaded holes on a few of the parts. It'll give a visual indicator of where they are and you can add those. So be sure to check the description for a current discount code that you can apply to your cart that'll give you 15% off and save you quite a bit on your order. It's always fun when the parts arrive to open them up and see these things in reality. I've uploaded the files for these parts and I'll link that in the description. So if you wanna order your own set to build this, you can. Now we're gonna start by building the main chassis here and this is going together with a tab and slot design. After I check the fit, I'm gonna prep the edges just with a brown Scotch-Brite pad and then wipe things down with a little acetone. I'm using this fabrication square to hold everything square. You could just use a regular speed square or something like that and hold it in place. But having these first three items square is gonna be very important for the whole build to go together. Once these are right, the rest of it will fit together really easily. So with those tacked in place, I can just make a little sandwich here. And this piece is gonna give me two receiver tubes to hold the different components, as well as four screws, threaded holes for screws that'll hold them in place, and a support for my tensioning mechanism. I like to do a fit check before I weld things out, and this is looking good. I'll just point out that I only had the tabs extend halfway through the plate thickness, which is going to give me some good area to get a nice weld. I'm going to TIG weld each of these corners because there's a better chance of penetrating down into the root with TIG than with a short circuit MIG weld. It's always a good idea to clean up your joint before running a second pass, and then check everything for square after, and also make sure it fits together before you get too far along. Everything's looking good, so I can finish this out just like I did before, including those corners. I could have just left them like they are, but I want a flat surface, so I'm gonna fill everything in with the MIG welder here. Just doing a slight weave back and forth, allowing that wire to fill in the whole groove. And I'll do the same thing on the corners, giving me something like that that I can grind down for a flat surface. Let's check the fit and make sure it sits on the motor and it is right on the money. I'm going to cut some tubing now to fit in those receivers. This is just one and a half inch tubing with a 3 16 inch wall and I need to drill and tap two holes in it to be able to attach my platen. Once I have threaded holes in there, I can set things in place and make sure that it fits right and I'm able to adjust the angle. This is really starting to look like a grinder now with three of the four rolls in place. While I'm working on the platen, I'm gonna go ahead and make a backing plate for the belt to help support it. And this is just simply welding these two tabs to this plate that was already cut. I'm gonna throw a fillet weld on the inside for a little added strength and then use this ruler to make sure that it doesn't sit proud of the two rollers on the platen. Now I can turn my attention to the tensioning and tracking mechanism, which is one of the most important parts of the build. It'll pivot like this with a spring to pull tension, and I'm going to add a few pieces to make this a box section and give it a little bit wider dimension for support. In order to get the box section to fit together right, I need to match my whole location and scribe the top of the box section area. I'll grind a little chamfer on the edge of these box section pieces so that I can weld down inside that bevel when I put it together, and then tack them in place. 
You'll see how this all fits together in a minute. Notice I'm using that one, two, three block to keep everything aligned nice and square while I tack it up. Now you can see how that box section holds everything together and gives me a little bit more support through that region. A few welds down in those bevels and it should be ready to go. In order to line up all the rollers, I need a spacer that'll hold things in place. And instead of just leaving it loose, I'll go ahead and weld this on like a boss. This has turned out to be quite the little contraption here, but it went together pretty easily. I can put it in place and this spring is what will hold the tension on the belt whenever I'm using it. And that tab up at the top is gonna act as a handle so that I can pull the roller down, relieve that spring tension and easily change the belts. This is working really well so far. Now we need a tracking mechanism like this and it's going to be a C-shaped part made from these three pieces. Because it has to clear around that one inch wide piece, I'm using a one, two, three block plus a little bit of filler metal to add the gap to it. I'll put a few tacks up here on the top and then go ahead and weld it out with that spacer inside to make sure I'm still able to maintain the overall spacing between it and keep it fitting just right. The welds on the outside should be sufficient for this. You can see how that slides over the tensioning mechanism right there and then there's a through hole and a threaded hole, which I can put this thumb screw in. And as I tighten that, it changes the angle of the roller and that's gonna affect the tracking when the whole grinder is complete. With everything in place, I'm so excited to try this out and uh, that could have gone better. I think the problem is just one of belt tension. So if I slide this platen out a little bit, I'm gonna have a little bit more belt tension uh, than I did before. And I'm pretty sure that'll correct the issue. Here, let's go ahead and run it through the speed range and make sure everything's tracking okay. And it seems to be working much better. Now I'll turn my attention to building a stand to hold this whole thing up out of this one inch square tubing. I'm gonna make a few miter cuts and let me show you these pieces. There are four identical pieces with mitered corners that are going to act as bottom and side pieces and then these two cross members and these will sit in place directly under the motor and allow me to use the mount plate with four different holes to hold them in place. These uprights on the side are going to be used to allow me to set the whole grinder on the bottom or on the side to run it horizontally. So I think it'll work pretty well. I'm just gonna clamp everything in place and make these two L-shaped pieces. To avoid distortion, I'm welding the two sides first from the inside to the outside, and then I'm gonna weld the outside corner, saving the fillet weld for last. I'm lining everything up here on the corner of my welding table and clamping it in place to make sure I keep it sitting nice and square. Now when I go to weld this out, like you often do, I'm gonna place some musical clamps because keeping a little bit of tension there, holding it down on the welding table, is going to keep it as straight as possible. I'm gonna test fit the motor and drill and tap some holes to hold it in place. I'm kind of winging it on the design here, so drilling to some marked hole locations is gonna be pretty good. Because I'm using a spiral point tap, I'm able to run it right in with the drill and have pretty good success with that. Portability is really important, so I'm gonna to try to put a handle right there. I'm thinking if I take some of this one inch round tubing and then bend it at 90 degrees, I'll be able to put a handle in with that. So I've put it in the bender and I'm bending it around. If you don't have a bender, you could just make a couple miter cuts and put a uh, square 90 degree miter joint there. Once it's welded in place, we can test fit this thing and it should be close to completion. Now, I want a rest for tools to sit on, and you can get pretty complicated with these, which I'll make some more in the future, but I'm gonna start off with something simple here, just having this plate welded right to the tubing. Notice as I weld this, I'm only welding on the outside. I'm not going to weld that inner fillet because I don't want to distort the plate. I want it to sit as flat as possible, so this should work out pretty well. Now that that's in place, I'd like to mount my controller to hold it where it is. I didn't know which controller I was gonna use when I ordered my laser cut plates, so I'm going old school. I'm using some transfer punches here, which will sit right in the diameter of the hole and allow me to precisely mark them out. 
Once I've drilled those holes, a little bit of work on the bandsaw, and I'll have a plate that should work pretty good just out of the scrap metal. Once that's cleaned up a little bit, a little welding, and we're ready to install the controller. Well, taking a look at that, it is looking pretty good. That wiring needs to be cleaned up for sure, which we'll do in a minute. But let's go ahead and try out the horizontal orientation. And it looks like it sits nicely there too. So I'm going to run it through its speed ranges and make sure everything is good before I finish it out in case I need any modifications. And so far, everything works great. With the parts back from powder coat, I can just reassemble everything and it's looking really nice. I went with some black textured powder coat because my powder coater can do that quickly by putting it in with some of their regular parts. I've drilled and tapped holes for some rubber mounting feet both on the bottom and on the side to allow it to sit on uneven surfaces and not move around too much on me. A few plastic caps in the ends of the tubing to close everything up and give a finished look and it's working pretty well. I'm really happy with how this tracking mechanism runs and how it operates even at maximum speed and throughout the speed range. I'll need to make a different tool rest for when it sits horizontally because this one doesn't fit right, but I'm planning on making several attachments for this anyway. I'll just check and make sure that the tracking and everything runs well even when it's sitting in that horizontal orientation. I'm really happy with how this tool turned out. If you liked this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. And if you want to learn welding and fabrication, check out my courses that I've linked in the description below. We'll see you next time.